Hey everybody. It's been a long time since we've done anything, so I figured what the heck. Let's just talk a little bit about a fuel air ratio control um, with boilers. So it's pretty basic, right? Here we see we have our air, and this is your flow transmitter. And over here you have your fuel, and this is its flow transmitter. Now what you see is air actually comes into an f of x block okay and the reason being is we take the air flow right and we square root that value and send it to the controls and the controls that would provide us a basically a, a raw air flow value um, but that air flow is not going to be a one-to-one -one with fuel flow so what we do is if we have 15 percent let's say of air and we're actually flowing let's say 20 percent of fuel we run that through the f of x and we say that 15 percent in is now 20 percent air which makes 20 match with what would be 20% of fuel. So when you look at it from a controls perspective, then basically you have 20% air, 20% fuel, and your ratio is one, which is good. Anyway, so we're gonna take the air from the flow transmitter. And again, remember if it's a DP style flow, That was a really crappy orifice there. All right, where you're measuring a DP, then you've got to always remember that flow is going to be the square of the DP. Okay, sweet. Don't forget that. I'll quiz you on it. All right, let's erase some of this stuff here. Cool. So now that we know, we take the air, we square root the output value, we characterize that to match gas flow. Now we can begin to look at, you know, the cross limiting. All right. So here's the master demand. All right. And you'll see you have a high select block here and you have a low select block here. All right. So let's say, all right, let's, let's clean up some of this stuff again. All right. Okay, so let's say the master demand is going to call for 30%, okay? 30% is now going to go to the high select block and it's going to go to the low select block okay all right so as you can see air flow is going to come through the characterizer get characterized to match gas flow there's a little bit of o2 trim factor applied but let's let's assume o2's trim factor right now is just one okay so let's say air flow is coming out at 28 all right, let's say the O2 trim factor is one because O2 is good. So leaving this block is 28, all right? That's going to head over to the low select block. So you'll have 28 coming into the low select block and you'll have 30 coming into the low select block. So the fuel set point is going to take the lower of the set points of 30 or 28 and make that the set point of fuel. So in this case, 28 is lower than 30, so the fuel select set point is going to be 28. Now, let's say the fuel is outputting mm, 26. 
26 is now going to travel to the high select, okay, and 26 will come into this high select block. 30 is coming from the master to the high select. So the controls are going to select the higher of the two between master and fuel flow. So in this case, 30 is higher than 26. So 30 becomes the airflow set point. So as you'll see, if 28 is registering as the PV into the PID controller, and the logic has high selected 30, that's going to cause the output of the PID controller to go up to get the airflow to 30. In the meantime, right, what's going to happen over here is the fuel flow is coming in at 26. The set point is still 28, so the CV of the fuel control is going to go up. But in this way, we always make sure that the set point of the air is always higher than the set point of the fuel when going up in firing rate. And essentially, it's the inverse going down where the set point of the fuel going down is always going to be lower than the set point of the air going down. So what that does is it, mean, it makes sure that we always maintain a fuel air ratio of one or a leaner ratio as we increase or decrease in firing rate. Now what will happen is you have to have some sort of dead band and the reason being is if you don't have a dead band if you will then the fuel and air control will fight themselves. So what we do is we give the cross limiting action a 2% dead band on air and fuel so that way within that 2% they have a little bit of wiggle room to continue to increase in firing rate or decrease in firing rate. Otherwise, like I said, the controls will start to fight themselves and what will end up happening is you'll see a very erratic fuel and air control and they won't be able to smoothly increase in firing rate or decrease in firing rate. So there you have it. Now as you can see, the air PV is always going to this low select between the master and the air PV to become the set point of fuel. The fuel flow PV is always going to the high select between the master and the fuel to become the air set point. Thus always ensuring we have a leaner ratio as we increase or decrease in firing rate. And there you go, that's fuel air ratio control. Hope you enjoyed that. Tune into the Carbon Kings podcast. Hopefully we can get that going again soon. Otherwise, enjoy our YouTube videos and burn responsibly.